Iran did not abolish the morality police. Western media spreads regime lies. Recently, many reputable Western media outlets and other established mainstream news organizations have blindly echoed propaganda manufactured by Iran's regime. Al Jazeera reported that Iran's prosecutor general announced the cessation of the so-called morality police. According to the article, Prosecutor General Mohammad Jafar Montezeri said the morality police had been, quote, shut down by the same place it had been launched from in the past. The New York Times, the New York Times published wow. an article with the misleading and bold title, quote, Iran abolishes the morality police after months of protest and claimed the news was unverified, but added that the morality police is scarcely seen on the streets. Iranian activists sounded the alarm about the false victory. The New York Times title was later amended after massive backlash. The BBC was more conservative in their coverage and called Montezeri's announcement a quote unquote uncertainty. An anti-regime Instagram account uh, called From Iran said mainstream media outlets are deceived at best in its post. In an interview with an M excuse me. MSNBC, Masih Alinejad, a U.S.-based Iranian-American journalist and activist, made it clear that reports about shutting down the morality police are lies started by the regime and propagated by Western media, and that the chief aim of the uprising is to abolish the Islamic Republic itself, not solely the mandatory hijab. The people responsible for spreading this kind of information to whitewash how bad the Islamic Republic is are a specific group associated with an organization called Nayak. And they have been proven time and time and again to be not credible and constantly be like they have a very modern reform look, like they have women without hijab and men with suits and ties that are specifically in the United States with the job of uh, downplaying how bad the Islamic Republic is, right? Even though they don't look like people who are religious or hardliners, sometimes they might be like, oh yeah, human rights is bad in, U uh, in Iran, okay? But what about the US? These are the people who every time you mention anything about Iran's human rights violation, the first thing they wanna mention is the Mossadegh related coup d'etat and how US is to be blamed mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. And they are so incredible and they have been proven to be um, controlled and connected to the Islamic Republic so many times. And yet they have connections everywhere in US media, like the most prestigious um, me media and news outlets and magazines and newspapers and podcasts. Every time, like, well, not every time, but most of the time, I see somebody like Al Jazeera, CNN, MSNBC, New York Times, New York Times, uh, France 24. Every time they want to invite a Iran expert, they get somebody from Nayak. The most, uh, the most uh, famous one is Trisha. Uh, what is it? Parsi. Trita Parsi. Right? Trita Parsi, right? That guy is the founder of Nayak. And I mean, the regime itself has confessed to the fact that they are using these people for whitewashing themselves as a propaganda. These are propaganda. The, the, Washington, are lobbyists. Post, the Washington Post has a whole expose. Right. We're talking about Nayak literally being the mouthpiece of the regime. It's so not a conspiracy. They... I thought it was a conspiracy. It's not. It's not a conspiracy. And they're still, they're still now, after all this being exposed, they're still invited everywhere. I don't understand. I get like, like, you know, when sometimes I'm not looking at my phone um, and they're like, I'm listening to like big YouTube channels or famous um, news, uh, you know, coverage on, um, on YouTube or something, right? Or a podcast I'm listening to. They're like, and, this, and we have uh, somebody from Iran, an expert from Iran with this and this. And I'm like, I'm not looking at my phone. I'm like, it's Nayak, isn't it? It's Nayak again, isn't it? And then I go look at my phone and I do a search on Google like, yep, it's Nayak again. God damn it. Every time. It's so sickening. I'm so tired of these people. Yeah, um, no, I completely agree. And yeah. what is really hopeful, though, is that people are very in the diaspora are very conscious about this. Like I went to a demonstration today and one of the chants that they were chanting the whole time is Nyack supports dictators. <laughs> like, 
people are very conscious of this. Um, now I will say people do send genuine like threats that are not okay to a lot of these people, but I mean, as someone who's gone through that, it's just not fun. Um, and oh my God, the other good thing is that when these people that have been affiliated with NIAC get invited to speaking events that the diaspora just like will not allow it. Like they completely bombard all these organizations that allowed this with saying, this person is not our voice. This person is not our voice. And if the, which has been very success, successful in getting a lot of these speakers removed or replaced. And if they're not removed or replaced, people will go and confront them during these speaking events in ways that are very, very powerful. Um, so I think that's one like very effective way of mobilizing, but I just, just to put into perspective, how freaking shameful this whole media blitz was, this is so fucking embarrassing. I, I want to give you a quote. This is from Iran wire talking about this whole um, problem saying, but regardless of this issue, Al Alam TV channel, which is affiliated with the state run IRIB, denied the possibility of morality police being disbanded. This is a quote from state from state media. Quote, some foreign media have tried to interpret the words of the attorney general as a retreat of the Islamic Republic on the issue of hijab and chastity, it said on December 4th, adding, quote, the maximum impression that can be taken from the words of Hojat ul, um, ul Islam Montezari is that the morality police have not been under the supervision of the judiciary since its establishment. How yeah. fucking embarrassing is it that Iranian state media is coming forth and being like, guys, this is the, they're saying, guys, this is the most you can interpret from this statement. This, mm. <laughs> this enforcement is under a different branch of government. That's the most you can interpret. It's shameful. It's absolutely yeah. shameful. And the, here's what drives me crazy is that people might not understand why this is significant or why this is such a big deal or why this is such a big screw up. It's because when the New York Times and Al Jazeera are posting headlines, which is usually the only thing that most people see, the headline is that the morality police has been abolished, then to the international community, they are going to think, oh my God, we had a victory. Wow, good job, protesters. Like, you got what you wanted, you can go home, da, 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 da. And they're going to stop paying attention to it because they're going to think that the aims of the movement have been achieved. And when it could not be further from the truth, because one, it's not true. It's just not true. Two, if it was true, the morality police would just be reestablished and rebranded under a different name, as has happened numerous times before. Okay, it would just be rebranded. Three, even if that wasn't the case, if it was 100% gone, then it would still not be a victory because that is not the demands of the protesters. And it has not been the demands of the protesters for the past 90 fucking days. It hasn't been the demand of the movement, of the uprising, of the revolution for the past 90 days. There's a very common phrase or chant that's, it, that's said, and it's like, the hijab is the excuse, the aim is the Islamic Republic. This is what we're going for. We're not trying to abolish the morality police, mandatory hijab, blah, blah, blah. We're trying to abolish the Islamic Republic itself. So pushing this narrative to the international community that there's this possible victory and that this is only about the hijab, about the morality police. One, this is a reformist narrative. The reformist movement is dead. Okay, that's not what people want. I just saw Armin reacting like, oh my God, Susanna's going off. <laughs> the other thing is, oh my God, the, when the international community has the impression that there has been this victory, which it isn't, then they are going to stop paying attention. And this is so insidious because it is because 
the international community dr driven by the fury of and, and sheer force of the diaspora that has had their energy and pressure on the freaking neck of the regime like just destroying and cutting through their soft power left and right so this is this is a very this is an attempt to gain that soft power back to be like oh look we got what we want okay any continued interference or support you know that's interfering with the you know international or national sovereignty blah, 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 blah. okay it drives me insane. Even if this what this guy said was true, he's not even in a position of power over the necessary, the, the, the relevant branches of government. He's not even someone who makes this decision. So they took this one statement, one vague and inconclusive statement from one official to say, it has been abolished. The New York Times? Be sure of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The guy just literally said, like, it's not up to me. Somebody else might have abolished it. We're, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. That's basically what the guy said. And they just ran with that news. And you basically said all my points, Susanna. I have a list here, and you just said all of it. Especially the one, like, even if they ever... I mean, technically, the morality police has already been abolished because they're already doing it under, under a different name. I mean, they already... Even before this news, they were like, what? Like, it's called Gash de Ishar. They're like, what Gash de Ishar? We don't have a Gash de Ishar. Yeah, because people call it that. You call it something else. Like, so... Like what? When you refer to morality police, they were like, "Oh yeah, we have, it's or we don't have that. We have something else." The the point is that they have armed forces that go after people for their job. That like just because they plain give a different name, plain clothes like, officers, if, but CGs, freaking if, running around harassing people. Yeah, but it's not the it, same green and white okay. vans. It has already changed name and or responsibility has already changed hands multiple times in the past few decades. So this is not, by the way, um, and like you said, if they ever get forced to not execute this law, because there are laws that they don't execute anymore because of the pressure by the people, right? But again, that's not what the people are asking for. I want to show you some videos of what the new enforcement technique technique is like so unlike what people people thought like oh no morality police that means like people are not going to be harassed the government is actually trying to figure out how to enforce continue enforcing this law like they're like okay we have to come up with new creative ways on enforcing like this law by the way guys we're getting a lot of super chats um i am starting them so that i am to to for us to read after our, our rant is over right um Remember the leaked inf uh, information, the hackers about the government uh, leaked data that came out? And one of the enforcement methods was supposed to be to get Chadari women to go instead of using, you know, soldiers and police to for yes, enforce the videos of this. Enforce so before we saw the videos, we saw the leaked information suggesting the government is moving in that direction, right? So we were wondering if this leaked information is legit or not legit. And a lot of data suggests that it's actually legit because many people, okay. So um, even the government has not denied it. They actually are saying that they're coming up with excuses for it, which suggests that these are correct leaked data, right? But now we see the enforcement, the new enforcement method. Again, this is not the entirety of enforce method, but let me actually show you two things, right? One video, um here so there's two videos i want to show you I one know, i saw this one them trying to get prepared for it and the other one in action okay so this is masiali najat saying uh this, these are these are the woman chadori woman getting ready in the metro station in iran uh to go into the train and just take the take the law these are basically civilian police right trying to enforce islamic laws 
taking it, the government is in, trying to get its um, religious woman to take the law into their own head. They're like encouraging, like they, they, because of all the pressure by the people, they're trying to reduce the pressure by the armed forces and get civilians go after civilians. And you can see that these are the pro-regime civilian women with the chador, which are ultra religious people in Iran. They're like gathering around and they're ready to go into the metro, into the metro, into the train and to harass the women who are not wearing their hijab. So like, let's watch the video first and then I'll show you what it looks like in action. Okay. Wait, there's no idea. Is there any? Oh, yeah. So he's giving the date. The location. Says you see these women here. <laughs> they call them Fati Commando, right? Fati mean like Fati means like commando means commando. Fati means like Fatima, like religious letters. It's a religious name. I thought it was like so, Fatimun. No, no, no. Fati is like like a religious girl's name so they they call these type of girls like a woman fatty commandos so, look at that. so the religious um, officials in iran they're the the organ institution that is responsible for commanding good and you know, which is like uh, a religious commandment to enforce Islamic laws by by civilians. So they're getting ready to go to the, this guy is following them and recording them. Okay, so he said there was a, a batch of other women that went in before these people. But let's look at how this looks in action, okay? Well, I was, so, he, wasn't he saying that basically they, they go to the train station and then they, they like, they go in batches on different trains. So that yeah, that's what he present said. On all the different cabins. Oh, wow. You actually know a lot about this. Okay. Um, so here's actually what it looks like in action, right? So Masih al caption says, Iranian women resist morality police and kick out the harassers uh, off the bus in Tehran. The woman who sent this, what? I don't know. Video. Sa video, okay. Video says, we remove our hijab every day and no longer accept bullies from morality police. We will end this gender apartheid regime. So that's what the woman without the hijab are shouting. So let's look at how intense this looks in practice, okay? So these are, the, look, they come in batches. I, I haven't seen, this is, guys, can you let me know, is this something new in Iran? Okay, because when I, I lived in Iran for 20 years, I haven't seen women, like, is this like a pandemic thing? Because we don't have the niqabs in main cities in Iran. Is this a new trend? Or is this I, like, I think she might just be covering her face from the camera. From the, uh, for the camera, yeah, maybe. Okay, okay. <laughs> So some people say that this is the Islamic Republic of Iran turning the people against each other. However, some other people say, don't use that line, okay? These are not the people, right? This is the comeback to the narrative. These are, they, these are not civilians, okay? They might pretend like, because even if you are a civilian, if you are now enforcing the Islamic regime laws, you are now the regime, right? So if you're documenting people, people to hand over the evidence to <laughs> special forces, IRGC, where women are systematically abused, RAPE'd, starved, left in medical neglect. Yeah. You're enforcing state power. 
So this is a bad line here. This I disagree with this. Pa uh, Pakistan patriotic uh, patriot forces saying assaulting religious people in Iran isn't right. That is not assault. What you just saw there was self-defense against harassment. They have these non-hijabi women, or may I say normal women, okay, have every right to defend themselves against such harassment. What you saw by these non-hijabi women attacking their harassers, that was self-defense. It might they might have been the also first look at ones this. To, they were they were yeah. the first one to throw hands, but when the person that you're engaging with is going to <laughs> turn you into authorities that will torture you, yeah, it's self-defense. Look at this. Change their mind and do not attack. Are you got to, are you serious? This is like imagine if in World War II <laughs> you're invaded by Germany, like in France, okay, and there's SS officers right and you want to like take them out and we're like do not attack ss officers change their mind there is no t guys in iran the time for speaking and changing minds that is over we are this is an occupation of people Th these are hostages okay they do not negotiate with their captors this is war I don't think people understand that that situation is a life or death situation because the consequences of that encounter is life or death. Mm. It might not be immediately life or death, but it is most certainly life threatening. Let's be completely clear. Yeah. Oh my I mean, God. Yeah. Uh, hold on. We have a whole bunch of super chats that we need to address, right? Uh, Asim says, uh, wait, why am I, why do I get a hey and you get an uh, Ishkham? Oh, I don't understand. Oh, Ishkham. Hey, hey, Ishkham, Ishkham, by the way, Ishkham means my love. So this is not fair. I'm getting. Juna. <laughs> yeah, um. D was saying this didn't even sound believable. Boo, Western media. Um, I hope, did they do, did they do a correction or not? They updated their story a day later, and then they changed the title to Iran abolishes morality police unofficial suggests or something like that. But the damage was already done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we got a $5 super chat from Zagros. Thank, Thank you, you so Zagros. much, Zagros. Zagros is saying, Armin do you know uh, Hitchkas? And have you spoken to him? No, and I feel bad because you gave me a, a five dollar super chat, and I wish I knew more about this. So, do you know who no, Hitchcock I don't. is? No, I, I, do you? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, Hitchcock is Hitchcock? the father of Iranian rap. Oh my god! How do you know these things? Yeah, and actually, <laughs> Baba. <laughs> All right, go on, tell us. <laughs> Babak, the head of our uh, Atheist Republic Persian channel, actually met Hitchcock at the global rally for Iran in Berlin. He like ran into him there. Um, so Hitch guy, by the way, guys, go look up Hitchcock. He makes really good music. One of his songs that he put out in support of the protests is so good. I can't stop listening to it. Um, and it's kind of funny because uh, his his name in Farsi means nobody. So, yeah. Oh, Hitchcast. Now I'm yeah. okay. Now I now I can read. Thank you. Now I can read it properly because I was like Hitchcast. I don't know Hitchcast. Okay, okay. Nobody. Okay. Um, Zagros, apparently, you need to ask her Iran-related questions to Susanna, not the Iranian. <laughs> Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I love how you're like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um, um you know, Susanna is <laughs> oh like look, Persians in the live chat are shaming me. Qasim's like, shame on you, I mean Susie's more Iranian than you. But he's okay. like the first generation of Iranian rap. He's like not even the latest, you know what I mean? Um Oh, oh, Mustafa's yeah. being nice to. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Um, Secular uh, Sakai would, also says, Yeah, he would make a great guest. Maybe if you could like yeah. arrange something. You know. I but actually go. really recommend that if you're on Twitter to follow Hitchcock because he posts a lot of really good information and up to do up to date news in English. So it's good for an international audience. Um, mm. Secular Sakai also gave us a five dollar super chat. Thank you so much, Secular Sakai. Um, he's saying Iranian protesters should get in contact with Belarusian protesters. They've become experts of conducting regime destabilization operations. There's a bit of a language barrier. Wait, let me see. Iranian protesters yeah. should get in contact with Belarusian protesters. They'll become experts of conducting regime. Um, hmm. Yeah. I do think in general, protesters need around the world need to protesters against tyranny need to unite with each other right i saw i couldn't i still can't believe this right that i saw the chinese protesters were chanting in support of iranian women chinese protesters while fighting against ccp they were they were chanting zans and the gyozadi like the that's iranian, so like, fucking cool <laughs> That is amazing. That is that's such a beautiful message of solidarity. Like I that that just melted my heart. I, I I'm I'm hoping that Iranian people like I I saw Afghani women coming out. Afghani women, they're like dealing with Taliban, and they came at protest in support of Iranian women. Like you're dealing like with your own like <laughs> you are dealing with so much crap yourself at at your home. And you have time to protest in defense of Iranian women. That is, that is incredible. That is incredible. Um, okay. Yeah. You're muted. You're so Gossam was uh, responding to when we were talking about what are the actual demands of the protesters. And um, he's saying protesters don't even demand that political prisoners should be free. We don't take them as a legitimate authority to even ask them. They must go. I think this is a really good point because asking the regime for something is actually acknowledging their legitimacy Elizabeth's. yeah yes and yes. so it's like so, no 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 we're not asking you for anything we're taking it back ourselves yeah actually that's a very good point because some people are like saying uh protesting there was one group that came out with a video message that we want a referendum by the regime now and a lot of people are, you know like we don't want a referendum okay because a referendum means like you, the regime, will put on the referendum to see what the people want. We're not like, read our lips, get the hell out. We don't want you to give us anything. We don't want you to give us changes. We don't want you to get reforms. That time was like years ago. Your time is up. Like the only thing you could do is leave. Once you leave, we'll put on a referendum on what kind of a regime they want. But you do not get to put up a referendum for you uh, for us because there is no regime that we are willing to talk to. That's what they, that's what the uh, people are saying. The protesters are saying. Um, all right, this. Secular Sakai gave us another super chat. Thank you so much. Saying Zan Zendigi Azadi, woman, life, liberty. Love it. Yeah, actually, actually, you're right. You know, woman, life, freedom, liberty actually rhymes better. Mm -hmm. as a translation yeah yeah um yeah gossip <laughs> is saying i prefer kuskash over bisharaf bisharaf is too respectful for islamic republic guys <laughs> <laughs> which actually reminds me of a very funny video i saw earlier this week i sent it to armin can i show it yes i think yeah this is hilarious okay Okay, I love this so much. <laughs> Let me know if you don't have audio. Oh, wait. I don't have audio. Dominic, yeah. What is Dominic? Marboya, Bolanshin, Ba, Sadoye, Madorme, Iran, Boshin. Wait, can you translate that for everyone? So, this is an American speaking Persian, and he says, We need to get up and be the voice of Iranian people. So, an American like speaking Persian in very um, heavy American accents, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, mean, this is, I love this. I just know. Uh, what is Khamenei again? Okay, 
Okay, so these are swear words. These are per these are Americans using Iranian swear words against Khamenei, <laughs> and the Iranian people are loving it. The Iranian it's processors. so funny. <laughs> hey, look what's <laughs> hey, look what's I also really liked this because this made me realize what I sound like when I speak Persian. <laughs> <laughs> And I thought it was funny because I could understand them because I'm surrounded by so many people constantly cussing out the regime. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what else did you want to show? It looked you like had a video. Else. You had a video. Yeah. So the other um, really important thing that we need to talk about this week is um should i pull it up or should you pull it up uh you pull it up because i need to yeah. go to the okay um so shoot let me go for it so this happened very recently and so that's the only reason why it's not um our number one story but um so the regime on December 8th announced the execution of the first um, first known case of executing a protester who is associated with the Masa Amini uprising. And I say that only because, I mean, they've executed many protesters before, but with, with this wave of the protest and uprising, this is the first known execution. And so let me pull this up. Um, the first known execution was a 23 year old man. His name was Mohsen Shekari, and he was a barista and he loved coffee and playing video games like God of War. And he was accused of allegedly blocking the road um, with trash can and injuring a besiege paramilitary member um not killing um not maiming not putting in critical condition just injuring just injuring a besiege and because of this he was accused of muharabe which means war against god or enmity against god and also corruption in the land and both of these are both very vague Islamic charges um, that carry the death penalty as uh, punishment. And um, he was sentenced to receive the death penalty. And then he was very, very quickly executed. Um, and so he died on December 8th. And um, I don't know. This just destroyed me. Like I literally, I cried myself to sleep. Um, and I don't know. I really don't have words like the outpouring of rage is like something I don't have words for. Um, yeah. It's... So the, for, for him, it's just Muharabe. His crime was only Muharabe, which means war against God. Most of the affair ours is for other people, right? So, oh, you mean spreading corruption? Oh. Yeah, spreading corruption in the land. These are, these are based on Quranic verses, by the way, Muharabe. Um, however, I mean, do you want me to go over the details of um, this? What do you the mean by thing, this? Okay, the main thing you have to understand about this execution is, as Susanna mentioned, this guy didn't even kill anybody, okay? The, um, he had a knife. He was holding the streets. Uh, Allegedly. Against, uh, um, I, think it's re I think it's that part is pretty... Um, you know, accept it, you know, that he was holding a knife. I haven't um, seen any evidence about that. It, it, um, I think there was a video, but it's it, to be, to be, okay, let me make my point, Susanna. To be clear, I don't think that was wrong, what he was doing. 
because he was fighting against armed forces like this was you know so he was holding back the regime attacking the people right so um i don't think i'm, I'm not when i said that he was holding a knife against the regime th this is again part of um the defense of the people against their oppressors so i'm not saying but but my point but that's not the point i'm trying to make okay the point i'm trying to make is that he was can you bring him back on okay it's okay let me just in the, let's just leave it, leave it like this um the point is that he didn't kill anybody okay he was even based on islamic republic standards killing somebody that hasn't killed somebody for the 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 the, the according okay actually according to his own this is why i know he was holding a knife okay because according to himself the injury that he caused that Basiji member didn't even require stitches so that's how significant the wounds on that person on the Basiji was like it was so light that it didn't require even stitches right so for that he was executed two points about the methods of the, the process from the time of the arrest to the execution day it took around 70 days okay this is a this is unbelievable even based on iranian standards even by iranian standards usually executions take one or like at least two years right and then you have an appeal process and then you have lawyers and then you're constantly going back and forth and you're struggling you know and you're and it's being evaluated and then eventually you might get executed these people did this whole process in 70 days another point is that he had he did not have access to a lawyer of his choosing the lawyer was picked from him and he was not allowed to pick his own lawyer and the lawyer was a regime pick lawyer just to make sure that everything is done in their way right um this by the way the 70 day process is you have to consider how short that is because if you start if you actually only count from the day of the court proceedings it's like it was way shorter than 70 days which 70 days we're talking about from the time of the arrest the court proceeding itself was a lot shorter than that. And this in included the appeal process. Like he got a death sentence, he appealed it, the appeal was rejected, and he was executed in such short amount of time for somebody that did not even kill anybody. The crime officially being war against God. There are two types of um executions for situation like this as we saw in the leaked documents that was hacked right by black rivers the hacker group Khamenei himself preferred would have preferred that these people were being executed by qasas qasas means that the family of the victim comes out and demands that the person being executed but the regime told Khamenei that we don't a lot of these people are forgiven like are giving up Qasas, not asking for executions. So we can't execute enough people using Qasas. So instead of the religious mandate of Qasas, they're using the religious mandate of Muharabe, which means war against God. So even if the family of the members who are killed, so, so this person didn't kill anybody, but there are a whole bunch of people guys like lined up for execution right now. This was the first one, right? But there are a bunch of people that are responsible for actually like killing, being uh, besieges or um, armed forces, right? And they, they want to execute like five or six for each one of them that died. Like, again, this is not even Islamic, right? Because Islamically, technically, if you even want to kill somebody for execute somebody, you kill one person for one person uh, who, who died, right? These people are when like you just like, even if you were around that area encouraging it or like helping in any way, they want to execute like five or six for each each person who who was killed, right? Um, so not there's not enough for Qasas, so that's why they're going with Muharabe. Um, 
I do want you, do you want me to explain why the regime is doing this? Because this seems like a very bad idea. Yes. Like strategically. Okay. So it, this seems like a horrible idea right now for why, why would the regime execute uh, somebody like this? Right. Um, given that it seems to be fueling the protest, like this, ex like executions sometimes go down, sometimes go back up again. But the execution itself seems to be fueling the protest. Like it gets people back in the streets, right? So it, not, some people are like, oh, the regime is executing people so that people are scared and they don't come in the streets, right? I do think that the regime, based on the audio and the leaked information that we had, it seems like the regime understands that this actually does the opposite. It doesn't scare people. It gets them angry and you get more protest, right? So they do understand that. Also, this got a huge backlash from the international community. Huge backlash. Like, the world is shocked. 70 days. Like, how do you even get to defend yourself in such a short amount of time? Even, especially with, given that you can't even pick your lawyer, right? I mean, we like, should just take a step back from that at all. The, yeah. Anything about this situation, this system, is illegitimate and medieval. Yes. Whether or not, oh, the process was messed up. The process was messed up. This system is from the dark ages. Yes, Susanna, but it's but this makes it so apparent. Like, that is us saying that, okay? But the world does not see that sometimes until you see something like this. Like, it's it becomes so apparent. Like sometimes people think like maybe we're exaggerating how bad the situation is, right? But when the regime takes somebody that's slightly injured, one of their forces, okay, and executes that person within 70 days after their arrest without a, that person's lawyer being present, without any lawyer that that person wants being present, the medieval nature of this regime becomes, and this is like all verified, like this is not, gossip or unverified news like this is because the regime broadcasted this the regime proud was proud of this the head of the judiciary system in iran was bragging about how fast this was done they were like we did such a good job we did it so and he repeated it three times he said he said that we did it fast 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 how do you see how good we are like this guy is the head of the judiciary system and he thinks the short amount that he that they took for this to happen is a bragging right of how efficient the regime is. Okay, so like, so we're not like we're not like telling you something that the regime the regime was uh, broadcasting the entire court proceedings. We saw what a big kangaroo. Court, by the way, we can't show you the court proceedings because the confessions within by the um, accused by the victim. Um, well, by the uh, by, the person who was executed um, is considered by internet. Is it is forced? Con is a, is a forced confession. We could see that his. Uh, we could see the videos of uh, of the time before his arrest that he didn't have bruises on the faces, but during his confession video, he had bruises on his faces. Right, and the regime didn't hide it. Like the regime took the video of his forced confession from an angle where you could see the bruises on his face. This is a regime that is not ashamed to tell you that this was a forced confession. Like they are not hiding it anymore. And the reason why we can't show you this on YouTube is because YouTube does not allow uh, anybody showing forced confessions. But you could go find it on Twitter. Um, so here's a, let me add a few other points. What, uh, yeah, I was saying, why would the, do you, Susanna, do you, do you, why do you, why do you, it, this seems like a very, like even from a self preservation perspective, the things I've said so far seems like this would be a bad idea. Like, even like forget morality right now, right? Like a regime is evil, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what, for, fine, whatever, right? If you are acting within your self interest, why would the regime execute somebody and so fast, given that? It fuels the protest, and right after the United Nations, um, you know, coming down hard on st starting an investigative team on Iran and increasing the and Europe and North America 
increasing pressure on the regime on such so much so that I don't know how the regime can even breathe both politically and economically anymore. So this like right after all that reaction, the regime is now doing this, which now increases has has gotten a lot of backlash and it is increasing the pressure on the regime, both inter internally and internationally. What's your guess? Why would they do this? because they want to cater to their religious base, because they need to drum up support from the hardliners, because there is an extreme and deeply threatening amount of division amongst the hardliners. And as much as the uprising of the people has the ability to threaten the status of security of their government more than ever before, the real what really threatens the establishment is not actually those who are part of the uprising. What it threatens the establishment is the cracks amongst the hardliners, which is getting bad. So they have to do what they can to go to that base who is asking, why are you not killing these people in the streets by the hundreds? Why are you not going full 2019 bloody a bond on these people? Literally just shooting hundreds, thousands of people dead in the streets because that's what they're asking for. So they're signaling to their base that this is still who we are. We are still here to maintain an Islamic society. We are still here to maintain the spirit of the Islamic revolution. And this is how we're going to enact it. I couldn't have said it better myself. The, the regime fears its own supporters more than any other group. Okay, the, the international community, the protesters are all combined, United States, Israel, all of the all of these pressures on the Islamic Republic combined are not nearly as terrifying to the regime as it's compared to its own supporters turning on it. The day that the regime's supporters turn on the regime that's when the regime will topple okay the regime needs its base and the base was angry the base is angry of why the regime is not gunning down the protesters their base was angry about why are we not seeing more executions the regime the base was angry about why women are staying in masses without hijab in the streets and nobody is arresting them and the base i am in these people's social media accounts and in their clubhouse rooms and twitter rooms and i'm constantly listening to what they're saying they were promising in large numbers uh, if the regime continues to be so slow and so mellow in enforcing the Islamic laws that they would turn on this regime. They constantly say that we did not give the blood of martyrs for an un-Islamic regime, right? So the, again, these people are the minority in the in Iran, but it is the base of the support. Even let's, they, they're probably somewhere between 16 and 20 percent of the population, but the regime. If the regime, because they're not going to gain back that 80%, okay? So if it loses this 20%, or if this 20% turns on each other, that is the end of the regime. So the regime wanted to appease them by giving them blood. These people want blood, and that was a sacrifice for them so that they're satisfied. And I mean, and, and it, it, it worked. They were so happy with this execution. Right. So I think the regime is trying to test how much each side is pressuring it. Right. This was one execution to see how satisfied the base would be. Like I, when I was in their rooms and stuff, they were like so happy about this execution. They were so happy. They were like, finally, finally, the regime is doing something. Right. So the regime is trying to see, like, give them some executions, see how how much they will backtrack how satisfied they are see they know that the protesters will increase but they wanted to see how much the protests will increase they know the international pressure will be high they just wanted to see how high right so it's evaluating that brings you 
into this equation right now, okay? Because the regime wanted to see if, like, it's, if its supporters are saying, okay, that was good, but we want more. It wants to see how much more they want, how strong, how much they're going to pressure the regime for more executions. And it's going to also evaluate how many protesters will react in response to their um, in response to this executions. So if the protesters want, because there's so many people right now in line for execution, so many more people. So if the protesters want to show the regime that this was the bad idea, the best idea was to fill the streets in response. And you, if you are the international community, so when we're talking about the international community, you're part of that. The regime is also want to see how big of a backlash it's going to get from these executions the bigger the internet the backlash from the international community the less of a chance that these executions will carry or it will be less guys we saw previously because of international pressure previous in executions in iran were canceled because yes. of international yes. pressure this is not something that we're just guessing we have seen this time and time again international pressure does force the regime to cancel executions right so you could be a small but important part of this calculation by sharing news like this you are adding to the voices that is not letting this go unnoticed okay you talking about it you tweeting about it you sharing videos like this okay or any other videos or articles about this, social media algorithms will pick up the fact that this is trending news. Mainstream media will pick up on this and cover it. Politicians will notice that people are talking about this. The Islamic Republic of Iran itself will notice that this is becoming more of a headline, okay? So you, it, you need to make a bigger noise than regime supporters. You need to be a bigger force against the regime than the supporters of the regime are right now in Iran trying asking for more blood. Mm -hmm. You need to make this difficult for the regime. That is your job. To that point, there's actually a specific case that I want to um, raise awareness about. So there are a huge number of people who are face have who have been sentenced to death but there are specific um protesters who people are raising the high alarm on and who the people are reporting as they they fear an imminent execution of next is this young man he's 23 years old his name is mahan sandrat and they it's been reported that he's been moved to solitary confinement which is usually a move where they take you before you're executed. So I would really, really ask everyone to, on your social media, just make a simple post about Mahan. You use hashtag Mahan Sadrat and hashtag stop executions in Iran, hashtag do not execute. These are the most trending hashtags. And like Armin said, we have seen in the past, it is true that it does have an impact it actually does have an impact and ability to save people's lives when we make noise about this. We've seen it before and we can do it again. It's critical that we do it again. This is not negotiable. So I wanted to really make sure that we highlight the case of Mahan and so that more people know that this is who we need to have our eyes on 100% right now. Um, this is an okay. So so I, I wanted to highlight this actually, guys, because this is actually one of the most disgusting parts about of this, uh, this execution, okay? Zagros is asking, how do they execute, by the way? Is it hanging? Yes, it is hanging. However, it's not the type of hanging that you fake, okay? Because hanging in like what you see in like, um, you know, the, what, what it was like in the Western United States before, or in other places in the world, the hanging is when you, the way they hang is that they put the neck around your, uh, they, they put the rope around your neck, and they, there's a, a trap door that opens, and you drop, and your neck breaks, and you die. That's how you die, right? Um, but that is too civilized for the Islamic Republic of Iran. In Iran, they put the rope around your neck, and they slowly lift you. Okay, so. It's not because your neck breaks. You s 
slowly suffocate and die. And the pressure on your neck is so high that some people chew their tongue out while they're slowly dying. Right? So even when it comes to hanging, they don't do it the, the way that mo it happens most, mostly in the world when people hang, they hang people where they just, and, and, and I don't understand why. Like these people are like, you know how I say most Muslims are worse, better than Islam? Okay. These people are worse than Islam because Literally. Islamic ex Islamic execution is not as sadistic. In Islam, execution is beheading by a sword. And it needs to be clean and fast. These this Islamic Republic has come up with the most sadistic method of execution, not even prescribed by Islam. I don't I don't understand like what uh, they like they wanted to they want to teach people a lesson, I guess that's what they're doing. I, I want to show okay, Susanna, you want to show that video? Yeah. So before you show that video, let me make a point about this video that you about to show. Okay. So Mohsen Shakari, people assume that he has no family or anything, that he's completely alone. Because right up until his execution, nobody of his family was coming out and trying to ask for his, for, for his release or anything like that. They weren't publicizing it. They weren't publicizing, okay? But this is because the regime, but we but soon shortly after his execution, this video that Susanna is about to show you came out, which showed that that was not right. He did have a family and they did care for him, but they were lied to by the regime because the regime sometimes comes time. This happens time and time again. They come and tell the family that we will release your son. Your son will, your, or your child will has a chance of being released. If you do not publicize this, don't go talk to the media. Don't go talk to BBC. Don't go talk to Iran International. If you do, they are more likely to be executed. And the parents, to save their own child, they don't come and talk. And it, they actually execute them. When the, the, the chance, we have seen this, this has been proven over and over again. That, they, that the families that believe that line and don't come and publicize it, I mean, I'm not blaming the family because they're under so much pressure and they don't know this data, right? Um, they act, their, sons act, their, sons, their children actually do get executed. So what you're about to see is a mother that was most likely told that your son would be released, do not talk to the media, if you do talk to the media, the execution chances are higher. And this is a mother that, like so many other mothers, is discovered that she was lied to right after the, she was given the news that your son has been executed. Again, this is why they tell the parents in Iran that if the regime tells you not to publicize the news, you have to publicize it. If you publicize it, there are more, you have a much higher chance of your child not getting executed. You have to come out and talk and talk and talk. You have to get the sympathy of the people. If the, if the people in Iran see the parents, there will be so much more pressure on the regime to not execute. And that's, that does have an effect. So this is now, you want to describe what you were about to see? Um, this is the moment that his family learns that he's been killed. The mother, the mother, yeah. So this is the mother in the street, just getting the news that her son was executed. Go. Mohsen is her son. She's calling out the name of her son. Again, remember, this is 
somebody who was killed that didn't even kill anybody. This is a person that did not even kill anybody. I'm sorry. I mean, I, it just is one of those situations where there are like really no words. And like there's so much stuff happening in the background that is so brutal that like I don't I can't talk about publicly I don't know and um, it's I really oh fuck I can't, I don't have words for the feeling I get. Like my heart burns. And to have people, like I'm under no delusion like I want to be sensitive to the fact that like this isn't my story this isn't my community this isn't I mean it is my community but I mean you know this isn't where I come from um but to be in such close community with people who are losing their loved ones to see that firsthand to see the, the gruesome way in which they lose their family. To know that there are so many people that are never going to be the same again. To see the people that I love and care about, like, just be so continuously traumatized. To a depth that... There, you cannot describe. All, so many people I love who have been made homeless by this barbaric regime millions of people you know made homeless from their homeland generations i have you know people that message me from different areas of iran and tell me what's happening or Sometimes I'll be in the Persian discord with Armin and then someone on the call will have to be like, oh, I have to go right now because they're shooting outside. <sighs> I, uh, I just want to mention that what you, the things that you're saying is like a constant thing that a lot of Iranians are exposed to. Okay. Like, on a on a daily basis it used to be on a monthly basis now it's on a daily basis uh but i some of the anger that you're seeing against the regime and some of uh, well some of it like a lot of the anger that you're seeing um, if you like if you see sometimes iranians are taking extreme measures against this regime you have to understand that once you're constantly exposed by this much injustice, you don't, you, it's hard to imagine anything that would not be worth getting this regime up. Like every, doing anything would be worth it. Like there are many, many Iranian people that think 
that enough sacrifices, enough blood, enough loss of innocent lives, right? Whatever means necessary. And this is this is the part that they insist on, okay? This regime needs to go by whatever means necessary. And so anybody coming and lecturing to them that they need to chill out, they need to take it slowly, they need to be more gentle. If they don't take that very well, if they do not appreciate that kind of a feedback from you, is because of the is because of all this is because of the the constant injustice that they're feeling on a daily it basis. just shows how out of touch you are that kind of rhetoric is a luxury it's a fucking luxury talk with these people talk with these people when they're trying to turn you into the authorities that could torture you to death They will yeah. RAPE your children because they can, because they want to strike fear into your community. But talk to them. Actually, let me tell you, tell, let me give you an example, okay? So the head of the judiciary system, when the protest, when the protest was like, um, I think one month in, he said he came in a public, uh, publicly to the people. Okay, that let's talk, right? He invited the people to come and talk. Uh, like you guys are com have complaints. We I, we understand we have some problems. Come and talk to us. We could we could figure these things out, right? And there was this guy Hossein Ronari. Okay, he was constantly opposing the regime. Okay, and because of his speaking, there was an arrest warrant for him, right? And he himself went to turn himself in. He went to the police station to turn himself in. They attacked him in the in front of the police station and started beating him. And he was yelling, I'm I'm giving up myself up. I'm here to surrender. Stop. He's going to the me. prosecutor's office. I am here willingly. Why are you beating me? Like, you don't need to pressure me. I walked here. And then people are like, look, they're telling us to talk to us. And this is what they mean. <laughs> what do you, what? There is no talking to you. You just have to look at history. Negotiation. When they're when when they tried to negotiate with Kurds and they had a meeting in Vienna, they assassinated the people that they went to negotiate with. You can go find this. They got shot up in their meeting room in Vienna. A whole squad of people. That's how they treat negotiations. And yet the regime keeps saying, like, by the way, this whole idea of let's talk. The regime says, like, let's talk. And then when people talk, they send people to arrest them. Like, this is just a show. The whole let's talk idea is a show. Anyways, uh, we need to move on. I just realized that I was using the wrong mic the whole time. And I'm really, really angry at myself because this was an important segment. <laughs> That's okay. Your, voice, your idea was fine. Um, oh yeah, Qasim has a good line here. Qasim is saying, we will talk, but just about how they want to leave as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, and also, if the Iranian people get the, ever get the upper hand, right? They, why should they talk to, when the regime had the upper hand, their method of talk was just spilling blood. So now a lot of Iranian people are like, okay, when we get the upper hand, why should we talk to you any differently? You know, well, like, oh, now that you're now that if if you are at, at, at the weaker now that you are in a weaker position, should we keep talking to you the way you talk to us? Anyways, these are people's lines. Yeah, um, yeah, people are saying you sounded fine. You sounded great. Oh, thank so, you. So, yeah. Um. 
Okay, we should move on. Moral of the story is that I would really, again, like to encourage people that you can take action. You can help the people of Iran by particularly right now, we need as many people as possible highlighting and keeping their eyes on the case of Mahan Fadrat. So please hashtag his name, hashtag um, do not execute, hashtag stop executions in Iran. These are the hashtags that we really want to be trending because it has happened before. This does have the power to literally save people's lives. So I think it's well worth your two minutes. Yes. Please and thank you. <laughs> Ghassam is saying, thanks for echoing our voices, guys. You're the best. Oh, thank you, Ghassam. Um, and Secular Sakai is saying, Secular Sakai is saying, oh, yes, Ghassam, please stay safe. Revolution is rarely bloodless. It is not for the faint of heart, and it works a thin line. And again, guys, if the Iranian people um, choose violence, they actually did not choose violence. Violence was forced upon them okay if they if the iranian people ever use violence it was not their decision it's rarely the people's decision getting to violence is the regime's decision it's the choice of the regime is forced upon the people no no people no like there is not there's very few revolutions is happens that the people decide to use viol violence when the regime is not using violence itself right it's self-defense this is not an act of aggression this is an act of self-defense you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free too sexy to show most of it here on youtube we draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.